totally blind. Totally blind? You ready? Yeah, go for it. All right, so this experiment, you're gonna be doing chromatography and you're gonna be doing both part one, the TLC, and part two, paper chromatography. You don't have to do them in that order, so if you wanna start with the paper chromatography, you certainly can, and then finish with the TLC, but you are gonna do them both. You'll have plenty of time to do that. We'll start with the TLC thin layer chromatography. You are going to need to get your TLC plate. We'll have a bunch of these up at the front. Grab that, and you're gonna see that it has a shiny side and a matte side. You wanna make sure that you are doing everything on the matte side because this is the actual coating on this plate. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is mark your starting line. You're gonna to wanna to do this lightly in pencil. So I might come up, say, a centimeter or so. I wanna make sure I'm above where my solvent is going to be. And I'm just gonna lightly draw that starting line across here. You should be able to fit all five of your spots on one plate. So you're gonna have four known spots and your one unknown spot. Um, so you can see here, starting line across. And then if I measure this, this is about four centimeters. So I could do a spot approximately every three quarters of a centimeter or every half centimeter even. Make sure I'm away from the edge. I've got plenty of room between all my spots there. I could have gone even a little further if I wanted. I have plenty of room on this thing. You're doing qualitative analysis. So you simply need to identify what your spots are. So you're not gonna need to mass anything out and you're not gonna need a lot. So you've got one of my knowns here, acetaminophen, and I need barely any of this, probably less than a pinch. Let's say, there, that right there is plenty of acetaminophen for me to be able to spot, because that's all I have to do is get some amount of this acetaminophen on the TLC plate. My dissolving solvent for my analgesics is gonna be dichloromethane, so I would open this up. I would put, you know, six, seven, eight drops on here. You're gonna have your glass capillary tubes. The dichloromethane will uh, evaporate quickly, so I would do one at a time add the DCM, mix it up. Once you've got some amount of it dissolved, you've got a solution, dip the capillary tube in it, and then spot it onto the TLC plate. So you'll do this for each of the unknowns. Uh, I usually do one, two knowns, the unknown in the middle, and three, four knowns on the other side. And then I've got my development beaker. Your developing solvent or your mobile phase is gonna be ethyl acetate. So you'll have a bottle of this. You don't need a lot of developing solvent, just uh, you know half a centimeter or less on the bottom of the beaker. Again, you wanna make sure that it's not higher than your starting line, and then you'll introduce your TLC plate into here and cover it with a wash glass, just like that. Leave it for you know six, seven, eight, nine minutes until it's about a centimeter from the top and then you're all done. Take it out carefully, let it dry, and then for this, you're gonna develop that or you're gonna see the spots with a UV light. So we'll have a UV lamp in the room, you'll turn that on, and you should be able to see all five of your spots. You can leave the lamp on, circle each one with pencil so you know where they are, so when you take this back out from under the light, you're still able to uh, Work with that, measure your attention factors, etc. That's gonna be for part one. Your unknowns are gonna be pre-dissolved. So we'll have these already dissolved since the powders look a little differently. That way you won't know exactly which one you have. Um, and we'll assign those numbers to you. So you'll have one of those four knowns as your unknown to spot as well. And that's gonna be pre-dissolved in DCM. For part two, paper chromatography, you're gonna use filter paper. And there's a couple things that are wrong with this, so to say. Um, it's a lot uh, more flimsy, less rigid than your TLC plate. So if you were to put this in the liquid like this, it's instead of the TLC plate, which stays upright as it gets wet, it's gonna slide into your mobile phase and it's gonna go above your starting line and that's gonna be an issue. 
The other issue is that it's a circle, it's round. You don't want that when you introduce it in a liquid because you're going to get uneven wicking um, up that uh, paper in this instance. So you need to cut it into a rectangle, um, which will help with the flat line, giving you a nice equal starting point, even wicking going up. But the other problem is it's still flimsy. So what you can do is roll this into a cylinder, get a stapler, and make sure the two ends don't quite overlap, and then staple them together. Although what I should have done first was spot them all. So you'll have it flat, same glass capillary tube. You've got your known solutions, cobalt, copper, iron, nickel. So we'll have a little bit of that out in a separate container. Get some of that, again, spot it on your starting line, draw your starting line in in pencil, have um, all four of your knowns, and then again, we'll give you an unknown letter. You'll do your one unknown. Form this cylinder, like I just showed you. You'll probably want a slightly larger beaker for this. You may not. This is also, you can make it this high. It's a little shorter than this, that's fine. For this one, you're gonna actually do two of these. You're gonna compare solvent system one in one beaker with one piece of paper that you've spotted and solvent system two in a second beaker with a second piece of paper, which you've also spotted with your knowns and unknown. And then you'll introduce that into the paper or the, the developing chamber, cover, Again, make sure the height isn't such that you can't get a watch glass on it. So I could probably trimmed a little bit of, maybe a couple millimeters off of this. Um, and you'll let that go until it's about a centimeter from the top. Take it out. Carefully undo the staples. And let it dry on your bench top. Um, or on a piece of paper towel. Once it's dry, or mostly dry, we'll have a bottle of ammonium hydroxide in the hood. You have to expose it to ammonium hydroxide fume. So you're just gonna open that and maybe shake it a little, then open it and just run that over the mouth of that bottle of ammonium hydroxide, just like this. A few times and expose it to those ammonium hydroxide fumes. Then you're gonna go to your different developing so uh, solutions. So we have reagent A and reagent B here in the spray bottles. So you'll just spray it down with one You'll see some colors develop, maybe not all of them. You might say, hey, I can figure out three of these spots, but not all five, what's going on? That's normal. Let it dry a little bit. Note your observations, note what you did see, what colors did you see, which spots did you see or didn't see, and then get your other reagent, spray it down. And then at that point, you should be able to see all five of your spots, and hopefully at that point, you can correctly identify your unknown. Um, I think that's everything. Yep. Um, include chromatograms in your lab report and in your notebook, either the actual chromatogram, a picture of it, or a drawing of it. Uh, like I said, you don't have to start with part one. You can do part two first and then switch over to part one. We'll assign you all unknowns when you come in. You'll be working by yourself or individually for this experiment. Um, more than enough time to get everything done. Uh, I apologize, my editor is in Tennessee this week eating deer meat, so this won't be as fancy or funny as the other videos. Hopefully it's still helpful, and then hopefully my editor is back next week, and then for the final video over wastewater, we'll have more fancy editing, and you can laugh and, and leave me nice reviews at the end of the semester. So I hope this helped. Uh, you've got the procedure, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.